time and we don't want to hear growling stomachs in the middle of the presentation. So uh, uh, I'm excited to be moderating this panel. My name is Sarah Lee Whitson. I'm the executive director of Dawn. Um, the topic of our panel today is lessons learned, Arab Spring uprisings and failed transitions. Um, I should say hard lessons learned and I don't know how much we've learned but I guess we'll find out. In the interests of time, I am not going to uh, introduce the speakers with their full bios, but refer you to the excellent program that has that information to maximize the time available for our speakers given our late start. Um, but I am going to uh, uh, say a little bit more about uh, uh, Dr. Rahim, um, since I think she's less well known in this circle and has come a very long way. So our first speaker is uh, 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 Dr. Abdul Darderi, my dear friend for many years, um, but more importantly, the former spokesperson uh, of uh, the FRC of Egypt's Freedom and Justice Party, a longtime uh, activist for human rights and democracy in Egypt, uh, unwavering in his commitment, and um, uh, very uh, uh, eager to hear his remarks. Uh, we are going to try to keep each of these remarks to 10 minutes, but the speaker's presentations are a bit longer, so excuse us if there's any little kerfuffles at the end. Thank you, sir. Just one minute. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm really happy to be here with you, and I'm really uh, thankful to uh, CSID uh, for choosing not only the conference, but the title of the conference, the denial of uh, democracy. Denying democracy to a free people that demand the bread, freedom, and rule of law is dehumanizing. Today, we all stand witness to how dehumanizing a people allows the world to witness a genocide and to stand watch. It's all connected. As I begin to discuss lessons, hard lessons, learn it from the denial of democracy, I want to honor my colleagues who believed in the idea of democracy and were elected in the free and fair elections uh, one of the most fair and fair elections in the history of Egypt. Uh, and I would like, I will be playing the video of more than 100 members of parliament in Egypt who have been in jail for the past 10 years. And they are still in jail. Some of them died due to medical negligence. Others died because of the torture. Others died for different reasons, but the majority of them, over 92 uh, members of parliament, are still in jail until today. Would you please play the video? The video will be coming. You don't need to look at me. Please look at those and look at their eyes and listen to their demands for justice. Because their only crime was they believed in democracy. And they believed that democracy will be able to sell, solve the challenges that Egypt was facing at that time and is still face us today. There are more than 60,000 political prisoners. This is just one segment of the political prisoners who are uh, in jail in Egypt today. Uh, among those 60,000, 92, 92 members of parliament are still uh, alive. About 21 uh, died either in jail or right after they came out uh, of jail. Four uh, of members of parliament died in exile. And you cannot imagine when people die in exile away from their family, uh, it leaves a, a terrible impact on the families as well as in the people uh, themselves. So whether or not uh, you agree with their politics or with their person. What I do know is that these individuals represented the exercise of democratic process played out and with democracy denied, their imprisonment is a microcosm of the human toll it took on all Egyptians. 
As I speak, photos of the elected members of parliament, my colleagues, will be displayed in efforts to remind us all that they are not merely numbers. It's also not lost on me that many of the photos are of poor quality, but that too is a representative of the suffocation of space and communication and the inability to attain safely something as simple as a high quality photos. Please keep running the video as long as I'm speaking. The Arab uprisings were the most necessary response to the post-colonial failure of the Arab states, local, regional, and international, to seize that historical moment was the worst democratic loss in the Arab world. Based on lessons learned from the failure to promote democracy, I argue that unless indigenous democratic transitions take place, new colonial powers will continue to rule in Egypt as well as in other parts in the Arab world and violations of human rights, of human political, economic, and legal rights will continue to thrive. The violent hold to democracy was executed by the post-colonial military junta and supported by the illiberal liberals, regional authoritarian regimes, and the complicity of the international community, including officials and institutions from Europe and the United States of America. Since the military coup, it is reported that more than 897 political prisoners have died in prison due to torture and medical negligence. Many of the youth in Egypt today are either in jail or in exile. Demoralization is at a high time, is at, is at an all high time, causing many of the many to flee the country to or restore to substance abuse or extremist ideas. Politically, Egypt has come to be one of the worst police states in the region. The draconian approach to quash political opposition has become an expected norm that diminishes any possibility of a peaceful democratic transition. Since the military coup, all sitting members of parliament must be selected and or approved by the security apparatus, pushing the reality of democratic process further away. Since I participated in the free and fair election until today, from 2013 until 2024, we have not seen a free and fair democratic process on all levels. On the municipal level, it is, not, it is not happening. On the national level as parliament, it is selected by the police apparatus. And on the presidential level, there is only one man running, and we call this man who is going to restore democracy. When President Morsi, the democratically elected president, was kidnapped by the military, which constituted a dark moment in the history of democracy and the history of Egypt, and I do not know how Mr. Kerry, the then Secretary of State, saw that dark moment as the military, quote-unquote, restoring democracy. It is surprising that Mr. Kerry welcomed the military democracy. On the other hand, another the violent groups in the Arab and Muslim world, or the counter-violent groups in the Arab and Muslim world, are not comfortable with the democratic process, so they would welcome a counter-violence as an alternative to the European and American support of dictatorship and authoritarianism. Muslim Democrats preferred and still insist on peaceful civilian democracy that respects the will of the indigenous people and build the bridges of understanding and mutual respect and mutual interest with the rest of the world. Here is the American supported or favored military style democracy looks like. I will share just a quickly few examples of how the situation in Egypt after the military coup that was considered by the Secretary of the State at that time to be restoring democracy. Thank you. So 
the rule of law index Egypt is it was in 2016 number 110 out of 142 the rule of law index in 23 Egypt is 136 out of 142 and when democracy is denied justice disappear and then economic development does not go forward political freedom is not available to the extent that the military coup leader general sisi arrested all those who wanted to compete with him in free and fair election even military generals who wanted to compete in the election when there is no democracy, democracy for post-colonial countries is not just a luxury. It's not really a luxury at all. It is a national security issue. It is a developmental issue. It is economic prosperity because it presents uh, transparency, accountability, which do not exist when there is military dictatorship. Due to time constraints, I will just leave all I was going to share, I will be happy to share with you what is happening in Egypt, how many people died in prison, how many people are suffering today, how there is no uh, freedom uh, of expression, there is no freedom of election, and I will share with you my conclusion. Supporting democracy in the Arab world is the humane and legitimate alternative for all stakeholders. Fake military democracy has led to a failed state. It is time to promote indigenous democracy and support the will of people, regardless whether we agree with their culture or not. I conclude that if we were not silent, and by silent, I mean complicit, and I mean it specifically, knowingly or unknowingly, in denying the free people of Egypt their democracy by supporting and enabling continuation of oppression, starting by the military coup and everything after we would have been able to avoid many atrocities in the Arab world, including the Tunisian coup and the genocide in Palestine. Like I said before, it is all connected. Thank you. Free, free Palestine.